Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and the next episode of In Their Shoes with Jamie Windus and guest Naomi Nicholas Williams. So Jamie is a writer, a model and a cultural commentator based in London and they sat down with model and self-love advocate Naomi. You may recognise her name from the hashtag I want to see Naomi campaign aimed at the double standards in Instagram's nudity rules and just this week she was successful in getting them to change it. This is incredible. It's such a wonderful conversation and I hope you all enjoy. Let me know in the comments down below. Today we are joined by, I say Instagram's most hated slash loved individual. It's Naomi Nicholas Williams. Hello, everyone. A person has appeared. Hi. <laughs> Naomi Nicholas Williams, model, icon, social media take a downer that's 100 percent. it's perfect take a downer <laughs> yeah take a downer there we go <laughs> of instagram cards everywhere thank you for joining me of course how are you doing in this very moment uh, i feel like i'm like teetering on the edge um but you know of like anxiety but mm. i'm pulling myself back because there's work to do yes it's been a bit full-on but you know we move because you've been quite rightly very busy, but I think it's really important to acknowledge sure. why it's kind of got you to that point on the edge. Because uh, what's kind of what's gone on, babe? So, in July, just at the end of lockdown, Alex Cameron and I, she's a really great photographer, mm. we shot some pictures for my portfolio. We got some portraits done. They were very like tasteful, but they were like semi nude. I and mean, it was for my portfolio just to update yeah, it. Like, yeah, I was just like, huh, I felt very regal, you know, very royal. Very. But um, <laughs> majestic. There was lavender involved. I mean, you can never what, go wrong with lavender. <laughs> what more could you ask for? <laughs> Literally. So we took the pictures. Alex sent them to me. Uh -huh. The same evening, we both put them up um, simultaneously. Instagram decided that my body had to be censored because we were breaking guidelines, the, they said. So, yeah, guidelines, guidelines. or policies. So <laughs> <laughs> Alex and I kind of were like, this is not going to happen. Mm. Uh, we need to understand why. So we um, enlisted the help of Gina Martin. We love Gina. Queen, legend, icon. Hi, Gina. And basically we have gone on a, not a takedown, but we want to hold Instagram accountable because mm. it, I'm not the only person. Instagram persists and they keep taking down images of fat black women. Mm -hmm. And it's usually just fat black women. So we started hashtag. It was called I Want to See Naomi. Mm -hmm. It got a lot of traction, a lot of media and press. And it's just kind of snowballed from there, really. Mm. And the here. hashtag did well because not that I was complaining, I would never complain. Mm. But you were literally everywhere. I heard that, all but I didn't, over. I didn't like see it. You know, when you're, you're in it, I don't think I oh, saw okay. all of it. How did you How did you feel when you kind of realised it was tr gaining momentum? Like, how did you try and overcome that feeling of like, fuck, this is just on me? <laughs> that's um, what it feels like. It? it does feel like it is, but it's not. So I try and remind myself and I will like put out on my socials that, you know, it's never about me. I always find that this fight is not about myself. Mm. I feel like it's selfish to say that it is. I feel yeah. like the hashtag I want to know me can be put to so many other fat black women and plus size women in general. Yeah. Um, obviously I don't want the, you know, what we're doing to be lost in like a sea of, okay, well, Instagram censors plus size bodies, it doesn't. Mm. But I just remind myself that it's everyone that I've spoken to that has like DM me or I've met in person at events, they've said that if they are fat and black, their images have been taken down. Yeah. So it's kind of like a symbol, like this is not just about me, it's for everyone. So that just kind of keeps me, you know. Grounded. Like keeps you yeah. quite kind of like- Ish. Bigger, but <laughs> <laughs> on the edge, but grounded. As a model, mm. how have you found the challenges with being assigned model and then also this kind of issue with Instagram because they do cross over. It's a weird one because my modelling has now taken off because of this and mm. it's kind of shown me that, you know, brands and stuff only like to be present and in the conversation when something big like this happens. Yeah. And I'm the kind of person that will hold you accountable to that. Mm. Why are you now when I, you know, wanted to work with you before or you've not spoken up about well, this before. Thing. Why were you airing my email? Yeah, before? why were you not interested? And now that like it's everywhere, you want to like hop on the bandwagon. Right. So I will hold people accountable. I think that with modelling, it's taken off and I'm happy about it. Mm. But my main goal is to keep the conversation going. When you think about it, when you actually yeah. have perspective on it, what you've done is actually terrifying in a way, isn't it? It is scary. Like, How did you kind of feel <laughs> being like, I'm going to write this letter to the literal... CEO of Instagram. I wasn't like bothered that he's like the head CEO of Instagram. Like he is 
um, a human, like all of us, yeah. and he needs to be held accountable, mm. and he needs to answer to why this keeps happening. Yes, the other <laughs> human being on the other end of the line might be a dick. Yes. But they're still a human being. However, mm. if we don't get there... Mm. Just leaves up. Yeah, it's time to go. Off we go. And that's very you. <laughs> I think that people forget that as plus size women, especially bl- being black as well, it's mm. not easy. For me, growing up, I had an eating disorder. I was always the tallest and the biggest person like, mm. in, in my group of friends at school. Yeah. And I was like teased and mocked horribly. So now I'm at this point, it's, uh, I'm not going back and I, I'm unapologetic in loving myself. And I don't mind, like, who's uncomfortable. Like, that's mm. not my issue. That's yours. It's a projection. You're not going to... When you meet someone and they're, they're kind of standoffish with you, it's usually because they're either jealous mm. or they're they're intimidated. And yeah. whenever people say they're intimidated by me, I take that as, like, a borderline compliment. It's a compliment. Because it's like... 100%. <laughs> our energy is obviously yeah. too much mm-hmm. for them to, to comprehend. comprehend. You know, I'm, I don't understand how people are watching this right now with our energy. It's, it's a lot, but... We don't need a, a warning. No, don't give them. Just, no warning? No. Just, no. just <laughs> let them feel it. <laughs> going on to kind of modelling, looking at that industry at large, mm. how did you feel breaking into that industry at the very beginning? Like, what was your experience getting in, getting in the door? Yeah, not great. Not great. There's a constant, like, battle, like, going into a space where you know that people have like a preconceived notion that you're not meant to be here because right. you don't look like a conventional model. Mm. That was difficult for me initially. But I deserve to be in spaces like everyone else deserves to be in spaces. Yeah. Like I'm making a difference. Mm. People can see themselves in me, which is something I didn't have when I was younger. So it's always a reminder. I'm always trying to be quite mindful. Again, it's not about me. And I'm, I'm here to do a job. Mm. I think often when you go into spaces like modelling, whilst also simultaneously having a message that you share, yeah. people presume that you aren't a model. You're some form of like activist or advocate. And it's like... Yeah. Actually, no, I'm just fucking hot. There was there were little things, comments made, like, you know, not having my size in, in clothing mm. when you've spoken to my agent. Like, you've asked me to be here. So that's when it's like, I know that I'm here to, for a tick box for you. Right. But I'm very professional, so I always keep it, you know, a buck. I'm like, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. In, out, <laughs> paycheck. Yeah, 100%. How did you kind of get over, not get over that, as in because mm. it's not your problem, but how sure. did you kind of have that problem and kind of be like, actually, I deserve to be in this space. Grounding. So if I had like a really tough day, I'd like go outside into grass and ground myself. You take your shoes, your socks off, you stand in the grass, you just remind yourself of where you are Mm. and just be present and be thankful for what you have. And just like, I thank the universe for what I have. And I don't let the external of what people say about me like affect me right i cannot let anyone that has no like bearing in my life day to day affect me mm. that's how i see it now mm-hmm. like if you're not paying my bills you don't get to have an opinion correct do you know what i mean so if you do ever see naomi just stood on the side of a dual carriageway <laughs> in the grass <laughs> she's grounding herself everyone. i am don't be alarmed <laughs> she's grounding. so kind of looking back at your childhood and thinking about like representation mm. and for you like what you wanted to see what kind of drew you to to get into modeling i just think Black children, whether they're fat or not, mm. they need someone to look up to and see. I'm I'm a photographer first for anything else. And I used to take pictures of subjects and people. Yeah. And I never saw anyone that looked like me. And I wanted to change that. When mm. you don't see something, you can't imagine yourself being in that space. So it definitely was, like you said, me not seeing that growing up. Yeah, I had the strong women in my family, but they're not on TV. They're not in the media. They're right. not in magazines. I used to read a lot of magazines when mm. I was younger. I know anyone like myself. Mm-hmm. That's quite a, a burden. Yeah. Often, do you feel? Do you, do you kind of how do you, how do you feel about that mm. pressure? Because often that pressure is sometimes put on us by ourselves. Sometimes I'm very hard on myself. Yeah. So I do feel like sometimes I'm not doing enough. Mm. But then I have to remind myself that I'm doing a lot. Yeah, we can be doing the the most fulfilling work, but in the back of our heads, it's like we're not doing enough. Yeah. What's next? How do you kind of deal with that now? Is it the grounding? Oh, get back to the ground it's the grounding and the people around me that I, that I keep close to me my best friend is mm. everything to me uh, she keeps me just in what are we doing we're doing too much oh, you, nice. you're doing a lot like you don't need to do any more yeah just pause she, she just makes me pause yeah and then when she does that I'm able to go okay it's time to meditate <laughs> it's Good. time to yeah. get back I want to move on to the body positivity movement move 
as someone who's kind of an ally to that conversation, obviously mm. watching it kind of happen around me, and it's a very kind of intense dialogue between yeah. not just people within the community, but people from outside of that group. What kind of message would you give to that community now? We need to remember where the body positivity movement started from. It was yeah. from fat liberation mm-hmm. and it came from like black women as well and the minorities not being represented. Yeah. And I feel like that's just being pulled from like under our feet. I don't feel like we've even got a rug to stand on anymore. Mm-hmm. Like in it when we were the ones who needed to be represented. Yeah. So I always say I don't feel like I represent the body positivity movement. I represent self love and body love. And that's mm. what I will champion because I don't think there's a space for me anymore, which is sad to say. Yeah. But I just don't think that people get it. It's so frustrating to see movements like that, like you say, that were started mm. by black plus size women. Yeah. So it's just, it's ang- it's, it makes me angry yeah. it, because it's like, then when you try and, you know, try and explain to people, well, this is yeah. why I should be in this movement. I'm literally, I get like hounded. I had yeah. to turn off my comments and my inbox because I get hounded by well, that's not nice. You're just, like, excluding, like, people and, and bodies. No, I'm not. No. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't have to edu- educate you because yeah. you can, you know, there are ways to learn. Mm. But, you know, don't come at me like that because yeah. I'm not the one. <laughs> if you're taking down Instagram, <laughs> that is a sign that you are not to be challenged. I'm not. Ever. Runway or editorial? Editorial. Why? Because... Great answer. Vintage or high street? Vintage. Why? Because sustainable. <sighs> Pratt or Leon? Leon. Why? I'm trying to be vegan. Is it because of the love burger? Oh gosh, yeah. We've, we've had it. We've not got time. Okay. <laughs> Have you perfected how to wear a mask and full face of makeup yet? 100%. Doing it today. Do you follow me on Instagram? Of course. Correct answer. That's the only answer. <laughs> But on a, on a kind of more serious note, like, yeah. when when you put yourselves above the parapet and you're like, I want to change this, people mm. forget that you're actually a human being who yeah. enjoys things for fun. Yeah. What tickles your pickle? NFL. NFL? <laughs> American football. This is where our loves could combine. Oh. Because I see that there's someone from the NFL. Yes. On Strictly this year. Who? Are they current? Is he current? Is he not? Is he a current player? Is he not? Give me something to work with, Jamie. Jamie. just told me that she doesn't care and I should move on. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> why do you love the N at first? It's like chess. I always say it's like chess. It's like chess, but with cock pieces. Exactly. And you're just moving down the, the field slash board. Wow. <laughs> do, you think I, do you think we should play together? Yeah, I think it'd be amazing. We should start our team. Halftime show, Super Bowl. Let's go. Right, that's the new goal. Yeah, let's do that. Should we just do the Super Bowl? Yeah, let's do that. And just leave the the football. Yeah. Fuck you, Lady Gaga, flying down the, on from the roof. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi. Thank you so much. I Jamie. love you. I love you too. And I'll see you on the field. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs>